say we're invaded by corn. That sounds more exciting, doesn't it? <laughs> Make sure everyone's awake. It's nice to have an in-studio audience here. You mentioned something, Clumsy, that was really interesting, the way you put the fence up, and the government didn't take care of you. What happens when the government takes care of you? Sometimes there's unintended consequences. Let's take a little trip to Iowa and have some fun. Okay, going back in time, back when I was just, just about to come out into this world in the early 70s, we had some problems. It was President Nixon, real popular guy. What happened, he signed a deal, a grain deal with the, the, the Soviet Union, the evil empire. And shortly after he signed that grain deal to actually help the Soviet Union, well, the U.S. was hit with a bad set of weather and some other circumstances piled up, which caused the price of grains to go up. Inflation hit, price of grains went up. Americans got ticked. They took to the streets and they started protesting. They wanted to be able to buy their cheap hamburgers. And when the price went up, they started boycotting them, protesting, and it grabbed the media and the government's attention. President Nixon then went to the Secretary of Agriculture and told him, fix it, do whatever you need to to fix it. And then we had a really interesting Earl Butts, the Secretary of State, he then went and he changed our subsidies and encouraged farmers to grow more. If they grew excess, the government would guarantee a price. Wow, we're an innovative group here in America. What happened? Corn farmers wanted to make some money. They started buying more lots, it got bigger and bigger, commercialized, farms went from producing 20, 20 bushels per, per acre up to 200. A little genetic engineering helped. Mm -hmm. And the corn became crap. It became mush. You wouldn't really eat it. It tastes terrible because it, it's not like the old-fashioned corn. It's not the same as the sweet corn that we buy and eat. It's a raw material which is used to produce other products. So they got paid. All this surplus of corn started building up. Something had to be done. Leave it to the companies to come up with products. Who wants some corn flakes? Come on, I want volunteers here. Corn flakes. But why stop there? Let's have some more fun. How about some Tostados? How about some Tito's? Okay. We'll keep that. <laughs> How about some Doritos? Who wants Doritos? <laughs> Woo! <What's that? laughs> And why not have some Doritos while we're in the mood for Doritos? All these corn-based products started coming out. And of course, one of the more interesting ones was a corn syrup. Probably no one wants this. Anyone want corn syrup? <laughs> they actually have, were funded by the government to come up with this. Well, once they started coming up with corn syrup, that really opened up the doors. It's a cheap alternative to sugar. So lo and behold, products got bigger and bigger and bigger. So have, instead of having an eight ounce Coca-Cola, woohoo! we supersized it. Who wants a Coke? <laughs> and it went up to 40 ounces. Check out the ingredients in there. Where do you see high fructose corn syrup? It's right up near the top. How about some red candy licorice? First ingredient in there, corn syrup, corn syrup. Sour Pouch Kids, Slush Puppies. Have some fun, pass them around. Oh, check this out, Corn Muffin Mix. Woo-hoo! And then, healthy foods. Newtons. What's the first ingredient on strawberry Newtons? High fructose corn syrup. Woo! Pass them around. So what happens is that, of course, causes blood sugar levels. It's not the healthiest stuff to be eating. While they were having fun producing all these cool products and putting them into seemingly innocent and healthy looking products, it turned out that cat food has it. Why in the world would cats eat corn? But it wasn't just cats eating corn. Cows eat corn. Cows aren't really meant to eat corn, but it 
turns out it's great at fattening up the cows. Think it fattens up anything else? In fact, the cows aren't even healthy when they eat corn. They're meant to eat grass, maybe a piece of corn once in a while. But if they eat corn all the time, they get fat, they get sick, but it blows them up and they gain weight quick. So the far ranchers like dirt cheap. Did I tell you that? They feed them this dirt cheap corn, fatten up the cows, and this corn-fed beef, to keep the cows happy, keep them alive, they give them antibiotics, among a host of other things. Well, all this stuff slowly stems into the food chain. And the other interesting thing is this product which has managed to find its way all over. Look at this heart healthy sticker on this corn oil. I love the marketing, very slick. But corn oil, it's highly processed. All the corn products are highly processed, but it also has the wrong fatty acid profile. A cow that sits around and eats grass all day, it's got a pretty decent fatty acid breakdown of omega-3s to 6s. It's almost close to salmon. Not quite that good, but pretty decent stuff to eat. Cows that eat corn, it's like 40 to 1. It's way off, where the natural cows are 4 to 1. The ratio is way out of whack, too much omega-6. Lo and behold, fats get a bad name. Swipes it so that fats are toxic. Maybe saturated fats aren't so bad. Maybe it's a runoff of all these corn-fed products that are stemming into the food chain. It's really interesting to look at. So let's look at this. Someone's got to take this before it defrosts anymore. Corn dogs, woo hoo! You get corn fed meat, I don't even know, what is it, beef? Corn fed meat, which is then wrapped and breaded in corn, held together with corn glue, most likely cooked and fried in corn oil. In fact, 25% of the 4,000 something products in supermarkets are corn based. Our diet, we're depending on four grains to supply us with 80% of our calories. There's over 100,000 edible plants out there. What we have isn't very sustainable for us or our planet. Now, Michelle Obama has a program for organic foods. But what the F? Something's messed up there. Do you know what it is? We're giving $825 million to support organic farming, fruits and vegetables combined, but we're giving over $15 billion, that's a capital B, billion a year to the corn industry so that they can come up and help create cheap food products. Do you ever wonder why your cheap junk food's so cheap? We're producing 500 extra calories per day per person. Woohoo! Where do you think those extra calories go? What can you do about it? Be aware of how corn gets in there. Don't cook with corn oil. Cook with olive oil. It's much better. And try to go for grass-fed beef when you can. Go for organic products when you can. Although organic corn can still trickle its way in much better than the genetically modified stuff. Eat locally. Go to your farmer's markets. Just become aware of the food chain. Write some politicians and tell them that we should not be giving $15 billion a year in this environment to the corn industry. Now I'm going to